One of my favorite tools in Clip Studio is the lasso fill tool because I can quickly create organic shapes on the fly. But sometimes I need just a little more control over the quality of my edges. So much so that sometimes when I use lasso fill, I just don't quite get exactly the shape I need. And that's where the Bezier curve is a lifesaver. It's found under the direct draw subtool palette in the same palette as the lasso fill tool. So I'll just click it. And by default, it's set to the cubic Bezier, which I find to be the most helpful one. But you can experiment with the other three variations. The functionality is all similar. It has brush size and opacity, just like any of your other brushes. And you just click or click and drag to create either corners or curves on your canvas. You can hover over the original point to close it. And now you have a super smooth line. But the best part of the Bezier curve is that while you're drawing it, you can adjust it. So I'll click a starting point, drag a curve out. And before placing my next point, I can easily go back and by holding the control or command key, command if you're on Mac, control if you're on Windows, you can go back and adjust either the main control point or the Bezier handle. This works for any of the points in the curve. Then you just keep creating your shape, clicking for corners, clicking and dragging for curves, holding down control or command to adjust that curve, and then closing off your shape. Now the other modifier is the Alt key. Sometimes while you're in the middle of a curve, you wanna change the way a curve behaves so that you have a smooth curve, but that breaks into a corner. And that's where the Alt key comes in. So I'm gonna hold down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, and that allows me to drag one of the Bezier handles and now adjust how that corner behaves. Now I can keep drawing. And that's the case with any of the points on my curve. So for example, I'll control or command select this one. Again, I can move those handles around by pressing and holding control or command. But as soon as I use the alt key, I can break that Bezier uh, so that the ins and out points are have a different curve. I can go back to a curve again by holding alt key and just by clicking and dragging that point or I can turn it back into a corner by just clicking with the Alt key. So super flexible uh, workflow to either get uh, corners or curves. And as before, I can just keep finishing my shape. The other thing to note are these three modes. Right now I'm on the middle mode, which is just create line, but you can create both a line and a fill or just create a fill. So in this case, as soon as I close off the shape, it behaves like the lasso fill tool, which is wonderful when flatting in shapes. Now it's important to note that once you finish off the shape and you're on a raster based layer, which is basically this first new layer creation button, you can't edit the shapes further. If you want to be able to retain editability of your shapes, then make sure you're drawing out your lines on a vector layer. So that's new vector layer here, or it's the same thing as coming up here to the menu saying new layer, new vector layer. The vector layers will retain the Bezier points of your shapes. But remember that vector layers don't allow fills. So do some research on the difference between raster and vector layers to understand exactly what I'm saying. This is why when we've selected a vector layer here in the layers palette, we no longer have the option to use a fill or a line. You can only paint with lines on vector layers. But there's a lot of advantages to that as well. So I've just changed my color here just so we can see it. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag these out. Like before, I can still adjust these mid creation if I wanted to. But as soon as I close it and I create that line, I can go back to my object selection tool, select that and continue modifying that line as needed. And that's a huge advantage of the vector layers over raster layers. There's no need to hit enter or anything, just switch to another tool and we're good to go. Now, if I wanted to fill this, I would have to either fill it using another layer or right click, click rasterize, and then I can use maybe my paint bucket fill or whatever to, to go ahead and fill those shapes. So let's see this in action. I'll just get rid of this temporary layer I had and then delete all these sample lines. And uh, here's a good example of where I wanna use the Bezier fill tool so that I can get just some nice clean curves on this hand shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select my color. I'm gonna go and make sure I'm on the Bezier, uh, cubic Bezier, make sure I'm on fill. And when I'm flatting, I always uh, like to turn off anti-aliasing and that lets me make clean 
selections and fills as I'm adjust, adjusting colors later on. All right, so I'm ready to go. Click, click and drag, click for a corner, click and drag. And now I'm going to hit the uh, select alt, come across, click and drag, click and drag. I'm gonna select alt to turn that into a little corner there. Select alt, select uh, control, alt to turn that into a corner, this into a corner, this into a corner. Now I'm kind of doing all of these at once, which you don't have to do. In fact, sometimes it's easier to do it in pieces. So I'm just going to close that off and there's that. Let's do these in, in several different pieces here. Alt. Alt to turn that back into a curve. Looks great. Now I'm going to do this thumb. And this is why I really like this uh, tool because I can kind of kind of draw across shapes and just get those nice clean shapes as well. Great. Now you'll notice I didn't always try to do the entire shape with one Bezier curve. Sometimes that can get a little bit complicated. So just build up your shapes and pieces, focusing on the edges that create the silhouette of that fill. I also find this technique super useful for creating line work. I oftentimes like to use a curves as my uh, dark line layer because I can just use one curves and it goes across all of my covers, colors evenly. So I'm just going to Make that curve, hit delete to clear out the mask, and uh, go ahead and clip that to the layer below. Now I can paint right into that mask and reveal the curve, creating that dark line. So let's keep using our Bezier curve tool, except this time I'll just go into line mode. And I want to make sure that I'm on a, a stroke width that works for this particular piece. So I'll just make, make that a little bit larger, or maybe a little bit smaller. And now I can just go ahead and create this line work. I'm hitting enter to finish off a line. Alt, enter, alt, enter. And there you go, super clean line work using the Bezier Curve Tool. All right, I hope that's helpful, and we'll see you on the next round.